the law of inheritance go and try to attempt to study what is inheritance in Islam your children inheriting your wealth even try to think about that see how many Muslims are corrupted with that totally contrary to the Quran totally contrary to the Sunnah you make a survey of our own selves you don't even hear much of inheritance of a mother and father and their properties and whom they should give it to and how it should be distributed a lot of times people distribute their properties parents long beard kurta five time namazis ten hajj they distribute their properties based on how they like to and what they would like to not what allah says in the quran you know how haram that is you know in islam if you have a son that you don't like if you have a son that does not like you he still has rights over your property come on I think we understand that we will say no that doesn't make sense to me but it's not what makes sense to us is what makes sense to Allah that is better for us mm -hmm. you know how many parents share their wealth based on which child they choose to give what and how much they choose you know how many men die and have not given their wealth for the percentage for their wives you know how many women husbands die and they never inherit as the wife they're supposed to inherit in their percentage as a wife based on how many children and whatever you know how many sons and daughters you know how many muslims that happened to and i'm talking about regular muslims i'm talking of the practicing hajis namazis five times salatis if you want to put it like that we don't even care about that it doesn't exist and that brings me to a hadith uh, well an incident of Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala very well known sahaba of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa you hear it all the time sometimes the students read it here the Hufaz after Salah. Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who was walking through the bazaar or the marketplace or if you would want to call it the business areas and he saw the Muslims busy buying and selling and doing business so he told them how sad and unfortunate you people are some Muhaddithin say he said how poor are you guys you really poor people you're busy here buying and selling and you really are very unfortunate that you are losing out from the inheritance of the Prophet Sallallahu So they what inheritance? Man, they all bucked up and they went. They said, where, where? He said the inheritance of the Prophet Sallallahu has been distributed in the masjid. They all left their businesses to go for the inheritance of the Prophet Sallallahu so Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala he remained right there in the business place in the market area and they came back when they came back they said but we didn't see any wealth being distributed <laughs> what did you mean he said did you see anybody in the masjid they said yeah we saw people praying salah we saw people reading Quran and teaching the Quran we saw people discussing halal and haram but we didn't see the any wealth being distributed so Hazrat Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala who said hey, that is the wealth the inheritance and the wealth of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what the hadith is al ulimai waratatul anbiya the educated ones are the inheritors of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam so he told them that learning the Quran, learning what is halal and haram, benefiting from the knowledge of the Quran is the inheritance of the wealth of the Prophet ﷺ. That is what the Holy Prophet Muhammad ﷺ left. Today, do we want to inherit from that? Tell me, my brothers and sisters. Come on, ideal example. Same thing happened. Today, you look at classes, when classes are conducted, it's only five and ten people taking classes, a dozen or below that. You talk about dhikr of Allah, it's always a few people. 
we spoke about dhikr of Allah a few weeks ago. Hmm? When you talk of the Quran, you talk about fiqh, what is halal. We don't want to know what is halal and haram. We just want to know what is good for us. Has it Abu Huraira radiallahu ta'ala and who one of the most prominent sahab of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa He says that is the inheritance. To go to the masjid, to go and learn the Quran, learn what is halal and haram, what Allah says to do and what Allah says to stay away from. When we learn that and we benefit from that, then we would have had the wealth of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Today we are all looking for the wealth of the world. That's what we want to inherit. You know, some people are foolish. They all look, they will deprive themselves of classes in Quran, think about what is halal haram, learning the tajweed of the Quran, learning the knowledge of the Quran. We're busy into the businesses, the dunya, the materialistic things. Nobody says no, but those are necessities. You don't make that the priority. Benefit a little bit from that, but make sure you have your priority right. Tell you, we don't do that, the majority of people. There are some people, as I was saying, foolish, spend all their time into that, thinking it's wealth, but they don't really have no wealth. Then you have some more people who are even more foolish. They work so hard, only business, money, property, bank account, wealth, and then they don't even benefit from it. Other people inherit it from them. One thing is you work and enjoy what you have. There are some people they work, the money, wealth, properties, they don't even enjoy it. Other people inherit it from them. They are double stupid. One, because the Prophet ﷺ said, your wealth is what you benefit from. Your wealth is what you enjoy. Your wealth is what you spend and what you enjoy. And if you have wealth and property and everything and somebody else inherit it, well, you didn't, that's not your wealth. You're just a babysitter for that other person in all reality and i don't like to make jokes i always tell people you're the babysitter for your son-in-laws and daughters-in-law that's why a lot of parents don't even want they choose whom they want sometimes for marriage because the first thing they're not too really concerned about who the daughter is getting married to they're not really concerned about who the son is getting married to because they don't care who you hang out with and what you do haram but when they think of their property is going to that son-in-law it's no marriage there boy it's all about themselves. You see what I'm saying? You can have the most pious boy are available for your daughter. Say, not at all. My property gonna go to that poor guy. If it's a wealthy guy, well, it's all right. If it's a wealthy girl, it's all right. But do we understand the law? We allow this and think that is culture. That is jihala. That is ignorance. It's not about our culture. That is ignorance, and that's why Allah keeps on saying that when we ponder on the verses of the Quran and we reflect we the intelligent ones will benefit and I want to share one or two verses from Surah Yasin because you know a lot of us read Surah Yasin all the time you read it I want to use an example of Surah Yasin just to show you how a lot of us read Surah Yasin all the time but do we ponder on the verses of Surah Yasin I'm sure most of you read Surah Yasin and if you don't, you're probably looking at me as a fool. So he really think very good of us, boy. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Surah Yasin, chapter 36. Chapter 36. Verses number 11 and 12. But before getting into that, I wanted to share something with you. My brothers and sisters, in the days of the Sahabas, and the Tabi'een, and the Tabi Tabi'een, that's the people who came after the Sahabas, and then the Tabi Tabi and the people who met the people who met the Sahabas. Do you know what kind of struggle they made to learn this Quran? Huh? They used to travel hundreds of miles to learn, to meet scholars to get the Quran interpreted. They used to travel hundreds of miles to learn one hadith. Today, you know what's the difference? Today, you look at the world, Alhamdulillah, most of the masajids generally now. You got scholars, you got hufas in your own local masjid and you don't even travel one mile to learn. I mean, I don't want to make you feel guilty, but who the hat fits wear it. Those were the days when they used to travel miles upon miles, walking camels to learn 
the explanation of Quran to memorize and learn the Quran and understand the hadith today Allah has made it so easy that whether it be here in, the, in America or in London or wherever in the Caribbean you have so many scholars and hufas in your local masajid and people don't come to learn to read the Quran what are you going to tell Allah on the day of judgment I was busy making money uh, I was busy behind my dunya career is that what we're going to tell Allah